and welcome to Artistic Adventures. My name is Holly and I'm one of the youth librarians at BB Library and for the next six weeks we'll be looking at the work of six very different uh, artists and uh, we'll learn a little bit about them and then after that uh, we'll I'll give you a challenge of something that you can do to try to do some art inspired by this group of artists. And today, um, the artist that I've chosen is um, a cartoonist and actually an, um, an inventor by the name of Rube Goldberg. And to start off, let's find out a little bit more about him. So I have a book um, called Just Like Rube Goldberg. It's written by Sarah Aronson and illustrated by Robert Newbecker. And we'll give credit to Beach Lane Books for giving us permission to to read it, so just like Rube Goldberg. Question, how do you become a successful, award-winning artist and famous inventor without ever inventing anything at all? This is not a trick question. A man named Rube Goldberg did it. In a funny way, his life was just like one of his famous inventions, an improbable and inefficient chain reaction that ends up making perfect sense. From the time he was a boy, Rube Goldberg loved to draw. We're not just talking about simple stuff here. As early as four years old, Rube traced cartoons he found in his books. At 11, he took official art lessons from a sign painter. Rube might have been a quiet boy. He might have been shy, but he was determined to be a great cartoonist for a big time newspaper. Unfortunately, when he told his family, they were absolutely horrified, beyond dismayed. Rube's father, Max, had immigrated from Germany to America to give his family a chance for a better life. He didn't want his son to end up a beggar on the street. So to please his father, Rube went to the University of California, Berkeley, studying engineering and after graduation, got a job with the City of San Francisco Department of Water and Sewers. It was a good job. It paid well. That could, that could have been the end of the story, right? Wrong. Rube detested shoveling tunnels in mines 2,000 feet under the ground. He didn't enjoy mapping sewer pipes either. And he wasn't very impressed with the city's government. Rube still wanted to draw comics for a big time newspaper. So after six months, he quit engineering and started over. He got a job at the San Francisco Chronicle. For $8 a week, Rube emptied waste baskets, cleaned the floors, and filed photographs in the document morgue. Now in a, a newspaper, all of the pictures that are taken and articles written and everything the reporters have are all stored so if anyone needs to go back and look at them again or do some research, they can find them. And they call that area the morgue, so it's all the files of everything. And whenever he had a chance, Rube drew and drew and drew. One day, Rube submitted his cartoons to the editor. Night after night, the editor mostly said no. When he said yes, Rube sometimes got paid but other times he just got to take, just got time out of the office tasks he didn't like to do. After a year, Rube convinced the sports department of the San Francisco Bulletin to hire him. And after that, he was a little more successful. He developed his style. The paper ran his cartoons and a column too. This might've been the next end of the story, but then the ground shook, literally. The 1906 earthquake in San Francisco crumbled the city and left many people without jobs and homes. In the wake of the disaster, it can be hard for people to focus on their dreams. It can even be harder to feel hopeful. But Rube didn't give up on his dream. Instead, he did the only thing he could do. He drew comics to cheer people up. And then he made a big decision. In 1906, there was only one place where a guy like Rube could really make it big. It was the place he called the front row, the cartoon capital of the country. 
New York City. So he got on a train and headed east. He didn't have much. $200 and a diamond ring. The ring was a gift from his father, just in case Rube needed to sell it to buy a ticket back home. After 12 days of pounding the pavement, that means just going from place to place to place and looking, lugging his art from newspaper to newspaper, Rube did it. He got a job as a cartoonist at a big time paper, the New York Evening Mail. Here's the busy office and do you see Rube? Look what he's doing. He'd made it. I like the fact that the artists put, they have all the different times, different areas across the country. They put him right by San Francisco where he came from. I like it. Right off the bat, Rube became a celebrity. Readers couldn't wait to see what he had to say about all kinds of things. Like sports and politics and the silliness of everyday life. But maybe more than anything else, everyone loved reading about Rube's alter ego, Professor Lucifer Gorgonzola Butts. So an alter ego is just um, kind of a, a made up person that when an author writes about, they pretend to be that person. So that's who Rube is pretending to be. The eccentric professor invented one intricate machine after another, and none of them were straightforward. In fact, they were the opposite of straightforward and often disregarded the laws of physics. Although this was the age when new machines were invented, being invented to make life easier, Rube's screwball contractions purposefully solved problems in the most surreal and ridiculous ways. And here's a great example. There's Dr. Butts and this is probably called how to draw a picture. And look at all the steps. So he needs to pull this little lever and turn and stuff to draw the picture with him holding just the ink rather than just doing it himself. And here's some more examples. So things like, how do you put holes in donuts? So we, we have the goat eating the carrot that pulls the lever, that pulls the ghost up, that scares the bird, that drops an egg on the archer who hits the bullseye causing this hand to set off the cannon that puts a hole right through the little donut that gets thrown up in the air by Professor Butts. Or, how do you turn off a light? And that's not just walking over and pulling it. So, here he is up here with a banana, monkeys jumping up and down, causing air to come out of this balloon-like thing, twirling the fan, making the wheel turn, and this wheel, causing the clown to pop up, hit the bucket, drop the bowling ball, and giving enough motion to get the little boy that he can jump up and turn off the light. Or oh, this one's even crazier. How do you cut your own hair? Cat scares the mouse, causing the boxing glove to hit the back of the, uh, the rocking chair and Lever turns, this drops, all of this boot kicks the guy, and um, it ends up with the pulley, and the goat get, drops down and takes a chunk out of Professor Butt's hair. Just like the machines he studied in engineering school, these complicated contraptions required a lot and lots of parts. And they always worked, on paper, of course. They weren't practical in the real world, but that was never the point. Rube Goldberg didn't draw machines that solved real world problems. He drew comics to make us look closer, question logic, and tickle the imagination. And because of that, these machines accomplished something astounding and more important than any pile of nuts and bolts ever could. They challenged people to use the most amazing machine in the universe. Hmm, what is the most amazing machine? Let's see, it is the brain. Look at all those crazy things. So let's take it from the top. Rube Goldberg became a stubborn, smart, serious about being funny engineer, office boy, cartoonist, commentator, 
comic genius and award-winning artist and inventor, whose name is now an adjective in the actual dictionary without ever inventing a thing. Yeah, if you sometimes if something is really way too complicated, that uh, there's a lot of easier ways to do something, they'll say that that's a Rube Goldberg machine or just anything Rube Goldberg means that it is far too complicated and maybe won't work, but it still is pretty cool. Well, is this kind of thing still possible? You bet it is. Figure out what you want, work as hard as you can, and most of all, have a great time getting there. And here, um, just like Rube Goldberg, Look at that crazy car. He loved cars, so a lot of his inventions featured cars. Here in the back of the book, there's more questions. I'm not going to read this last page to you, but pretty much it just tells a little bit more that his real full name was Reuben Garrett Lucius, like Lucius BB Library, Goldberg. And that um, tells a little bit more. One thing I thought was interesting is that he received a Pulitzer Prize for, his political, for a political cartoon. And... Um, and that he didn't believe in retirement. And during his life, he drew 50,000 cartoons. And at the age of 80, he decided to become a sculptor. So that a sculptor, so that's pretty cool. But he said he wrote, you have to have courage to be a creator. And his work continues to inspire classrooms, cartoonists and artists around the world to think outside the lines. So just like Rube Goldberg, I would like to challenge you to think outside the lines, as he said. And that is to put together a Rube Goldberg machine of your own invention. And I'll, you can do it either by drawing, like he did. In fact, when, my, when I was young, my parents had um, a book that had a lot of his, of his cartoons and of some of these crazy uh, inventions. And I used to love to look at them. There was just so, so much going on. But I made, made one on paper, so one way you can do it is, is make it on paper. And the good thing about paper is it doesn't have to work, as long as it looks cool. So I have one here that is how to put ice in your water. My family kind of teases me. I love an ice cube in my water, ice in my water. So here's one I made. And um, so I've got the hand here, dropping uh, a ball or a marble down inside a funnel. And it goes down, the ball goes through the tunnel and it comes out and it knocks over the dominoes, the first one hitting the, the next one as such, making a chain reaction. And the very last one, last one falls and bumps into a matchbox car. It rolls and it hits the ice cube that knocks it into the glass. So that is the, the Rube Goldberg way of putting ice in the glass rather than just dropping it in with your hand. So you could create something that way, or you could make something that is um, used as things you find around your house. Um, I have a few things here that I'm, that I'm looking around my house. Uh, I'll tell you, cars. You can do all kinds of things with using cars to bump into things to do to move other. And you can just make, um, make little ramps using things, you know, cardboard or anything that you have. Um, I actually really like putting cars through things like uh, toilet paper or, or um, paper towel tubes. Um, in our house, um, I found, ah, here we go, Lego. Lego is great for building something high enough that you can use used ramps to have things run down. Oops, oops, there goes my car. Or something else that works well for knocking things around are just some dominoes. In fact, let me get these harm effects that you can see. Just some, just putting these close together like this. They can go around turns. And they work well to, um, my, my table is not even, to kind of, in fact, I, to, um, they work well to, oh, well, I did not do a good job there. I'd have to practice to get that. And um, if you want to do something bigger and you, or you don't have dominoes, something that works really well. In fact, at BB Library, a few years ago, we had a huge one of these. Um, we just made, just like using dominoes, we used, we used books. 
we had them all the way from I think the second floor all the way down even the stairs uh, up to um, down to the the children's room and, and up to where the stairs are but you can use these to oops, use these just like dominoes to, to knock down so books are fun to use um, I have um, I found among all of our toys I found a marble run that would work well um, trains and train track are a lot of fun um, what's in here oh this I think this was just a box to use as a so really think out of the box how can you use silverware how can you use um, things like you know mark markers and pencils and uh, just anything you have just come up with some the simplest idea that that you can and come up with the craziest way to make it work so one thing I want to show you is I'll bet some of you may have played with a really big bird machine because there is a famous game that is based on his idea. Okay, and that game is Mousetrap. If you've ever played this, this is a great example of a Rube Goldberg machine. So let me move my mousetrap set over here. And I'm going to go up a little higher so you can see it better. There we go. Do we have everything in? And I, I can show you this, but I will have to admit that um, we have played this so much, we're missing pieces to it. But certain things work. The whole idea of this is kind of like the Rube Goldberg machine, is that it's just the craziest way. The whole idea of it was just when you get to the end, there's a little plastic mouse at the end. And at the, at the very end of this, I'm going to come around the other side so you can see. At the very end, all that happened was is this got bumped and the little trap went down and caught the mouse. So that's what this whole machine does is pretty much just um, <laughs> just catch a mouse. So I'll show you how it works. It, when you get to the point, the person who who wins gets to set it off, and you turn this little turn this little knob, and this probably let's see the shoe. Well, the shoe is going to hit the bucket. The ball rolls down. It's going around there. It hits this bathtub. That didn't work. That and oh, the little guy jumped jumps into the bathtub. Usually the bathtub works, so let's try, let me try that again. Let's see if we can get him into the bathtub, because that, that usually works well. There we go, that's the one thing that usually works. So just like, um, like I had things that didn't work, you may find that when you're working on your machine, things don't work. And that's exactly what science and engineering is perfect. Let me move my camera back and So if something doesn't work, try it a different way. Try something else. That's the whole point of this is just to have fun, experiment, use your creativity and your imagination, and come up with the craziest machine that you can to do the simplest thing. So <laughs> um, when you make something, take a picture of it, or whether it's something you've drawn or if it's something that you've created, um, send it to an email that I'll have listed here for you. And I'd love to see what, what, what you come up with. And, you know, if you'd like us to post it, make sure you say that. We won't post anything that people don't want posted. But it would be great to see what you come up with. So um, next week, we're going on to somebody who's a more traditional artist. His name is Henri Matisse. And uh, he's known for his paintings. But when he got a little bit older, as we'll find out next week, um, he found that he really couldn't stand and paint. He made, wrote some, did some pretty big paintings. He just couldn't do that anymore. So he came up with a very creative way to continue to make art that really is so beautiful and so much fun. And it has stuff that you have around the house. Most of the things that we do will have stuff around the house. There's a couple of the projects that um, I wanna make sure you have it. So the, there'll be a couple of the weeks that I will have um, bags left at the library that you can come pick up so you have that supply but for next week you should have what you need for this it's pretty simple um, you'll just need some paper and scissors basically so so well thank you very much I hope that um, hope that you have fun exploring and inventing and making the wildest Rube Goldberg machine that you could possibly do so thank you very much I hope to see you next week